This is Jax. Jax is a blue healer. He's three years old and he has a lot of energy. Uh, in this video, I'm gonna go over some creative ways that you exercise your dog inside. We're in Iowa right now and it is really cold and there's ice outside and it's just not a lot of fun for us. Um, a lot of us think of when it comes to exercising our dogs, we just think of walking our dogs. And walking is a form of exercise, but just like us, walking is not as good as running. There are other forms of exercise that are more strenuous. I could do a high intensity interval training, that'd be better than a walk. Um, walking is okay, but because it is not a very efficient way of exercising, to get him the equivalent of what I'm gonna show you to do inside would probably take an hour walk, if not longer. And dogs sleep 17 hours a day on average. So when they're asleep, they're recharging their batteries and they're ready to go. And then we deplete their battery and then they sleep and recharge their battery. So all day long, they're kind of going up and down, kind of like an EKG. So uh, basically what we want to do is come up with some creative ways to exercise your dog. Now, what I usually recommend my clients do is start an exercise journal. The guardian has a career where she actually has to do this. So this is going to be very easy for her. So what you do is you just get a new uh, a notebook, write a date at the top of the page. If you have multiple dogs, just make a column for each dog. And then you write the time axis on the left. And so I just write down, like, let's say 815 went for a 15 minute walk. For walks, you can put the duration. For the other uh, act activities I'm gonna go over, you wanna put the quantities. Now, dogs have what's called a distended stomach. If it, it's not tacked to anything, and so it moves around, especially in larger dogs with a barrel chest. So if, the, uh, if uh, this one I'm gonna swing is uh, the stomach and it's full, it swings like a pendulum. And so it can twist and pressurize and explode. So it can be dangerous for your dog. Your dog should not exercise until it's been about an hour, hour and a half after eating before they exercise. Now a walk is okay because you're just going like this. What you're looking to avoid is a lot of lateral movement. So during these things sort of things, we wanna, I always wanna max out the first time I do it so I know what the dog's maximum number is. So um, basically whatever these are, I'm gonna do the activity just by itself and I'm gonna keep doing it until the dog finally plops down and says, I'm done. I'm not doing that anymore. And I count the number of revolutions, the number of throws, the number of up downs, uh, or the time of the walk. Uh, but usually I'm looking for the quantity, something specific. So, um, and then once I know, let's say that uh, I'm gonna show you some up downs on the stairs. Let's say that he does 100 up downs, which he's probably gonna be probably on 75 range, I'm guessing. Um, so I count, uh, so after I get to 100 and like, he's like, you're crazy, I'm not going down there anymore. Okay, now what his maximum number is. Now I'm gonna exercise him 25% to 50% of that maximum number multiple times a day. So what you wanna do, and I'm gonna show you a couple different examples, and there's other things you can do as well, but you wanna basically write the time and whatever the, the exercise was and how many quantities or how long it was. Then the next time that you exercise, write down the time in those. When you feed him, you can add that in there. If he has a really barking experience at the window or something, something noteworthy happens, write that stuff down. The journal is to help you collect data. You will think you'll remember all these things you won't, or you won't remember when. So if your dog's having accidents in the house, you start writing when you feed them and when you let them out. After a while, you'll figure out the window of when your dog has to go pee or poop. And so it's just that data helps make things easier. So you wanna keep that exercise journal for about two to four weeks. What I do is I write down all the stuff that happened throughout the day. Then at the end of the day, I decide to give the dog a letter grade based on their overall behavior for that day. If it's anything less than an A, the next day I add a couple quantities to the exercises or I had an, had a, add in a whole extra exercise. Usually they're gonna need exercise about every two to four hours. Now, if you were to take, do the stairs or something that I'm showing you, you could probably spend five or 10 minutes and it would be equivalent to like 45 minutes to an hour outside. That works much better for our schedule. And it's also, it doesn't have the production of like getting all dressed up and putting him on a leash and all that stuff before we go walking and then we get back. And it's just not a lot of fun going outside. Now walking, I, before I completely bash on walking, walking is very stimulating for the dog. Sniffing, they smell the way that we see. When we're out walking in the ice and snow, they can still smell stuff, but it's not as uh, plentiful as when it's the spring, summer, or fall when they can sniff the grass and the urine from the other animals and all the rest of that stuff. So, all right, so uh, just keep your extra journal for about uh, two to four weeks and keep on giving a letter grade at the end of the day until you get, okay, that's an A day. Now we know how much exercise the dog needs and how frequent the intervals need to be. And again, if they don't get an A, the next day add a couple repetitions or if it's a really low grade, add a whole extra exercise. I'm guessing he's probably gonna need about every three hours or so, somewhere in that range. So one of the first things I like to uh, recommend is this, it's a laser. Now, some dogs, it is not healthy for them to get a laser. Some dogs, if they can't catch it, they get very frustrated. Now he, if you can see, he's breathing a little bit heavy. This is because of stress. 
Normally he is aggressive and protective to people in his house. I set him up for success because I do this for a living and we did a whole bunch of things outside. That's why I'm able to come in and he's not growling and trying to bite me. But I'm also gonna move very slowly and I'm being wary of this because I know I don't wanna put him in a position where he thinks he needs to bite me. So I can help him by just behaving well in his mind. And we're gonna flip the leader follower dynamic outside of what we're doing in this video. But exercise, if you don't give your dog enough exercise, it will amplify all the behavior problems you have and some problems it will make. Usually it's more of an amplifier or multiplier. It'll make your problems worse and it'll make fixing your problems harder if you don't get enough exercise. If you get enough exercise, it diminishes the problems and makes uh, fixing them much easier. So for the laser, the first thing I do um, is a couple of things. This is a flashlight, if I can show you, that also is a laser. Um, and so this one has a, a constant on or off. Most lasers are on only as long as you're holding it. It usually makes a clicking sound every time you press on and a clicking sound when you let off. Dogs look through association, repetition, and good timing. If I hear a click and then suddenly after I hear the click, the little red dot that doesn't smell anything appears on the floor, after a while those become synonymous. So if you do have one that makes a sound, every once in a while take the batteries out, click it on, click it off while you're watching TV. When the, you're not playing with the laser at all. So we disassociate or it's also known as desensitization. Another thing is when we do this, um, I'm gonna to try to distract him. You can see right here, it's on the end. Well, it's on the end, it's on the terminator on the wall, but he won't know that. If he ever sees it up here, he'll stop looking on the floor and only look here. So make sure that you do, if he ever looks up here, you turn it off or take your finger off or cap it or do something so he doesn't ever see it here. The other thing is when we get this, for some reason we all think we're Henry Mancini the conductor. Well, we don't have to do this. I can go like this. I don't have to move, and I will in a second, show my whole deal. Now, obviously, also don't ever put it in his eyes or anybody else's eyes. And again, if your dog starts breathing really heavy, worse than he was doing this before, so I'm doing this to alleviate that. But if your dog is calm and suddenly pulls out and starts panting almost like hyperventilating, and it looks manic, and its pupils are dilated, and it doesn't seem healthy, don't do it for your dog. Okay, now I've already tested with him. I know he does it. So I'm going to just kind of kind of make it available. There we go. Now, even still, they'll sometimes look at the laser. There we go. Get it, get it, get it. Now, the laser, there's only so much laser that you'll get before he'll stop doing. So, uh, and he's probably worked up because I'm in here, uh, but he was chasing this while the guardian was actually uh, straightening some things up. And so this would be a nice way to exercise him, maybe going up and down this hallway. Or if you have a big basement, you can do a circle. Or if it's late at night, I have a woman that comes and watches my dog when I go to LA, and she stands at the window of my uh, kitchen and just has the dog doing circles in the backyard and just wears the dog out because it's in pursuit mode. That's why I like these activities because they're, instead of a walk, which is casual, they're running. And that pursuit mode makes it more efficient. Okay, so that's uh, the first one that I like to do. Another one I like to do is what I call scent games. You could just go to Google and type S-C-E-N-T games for dogs. And the first one could be as simple as putting them in another room and then coming and hiding five treats on the floor around here. And so if, like, if this is, let's say that this is the leg of the couch, maybe, and he's over here, I maybe just put it right there. If he walks around the leg, he sees it and he goes and gets it. And I say the word hunt or search or find or whatever the word is. And so this is, uh, when a dog's, uh, for dogs, the nose controls 60% of their brain, they can't multitask. And just like us, if we're doing something very mentally uh, taxing, that can be physically draining for us as well. So scent games is another great way to burn off a dog's excess energy by helping them find uh, you or treats. Um, other things you can do is I like an Omega treat ball. It looks like uh, about a, it's bigger than a softball, but it's orange. It has little dimples in it. It's got a sleeve with a hole you can put all this kibble in. And the dog has to nudge it just right to get a couple pieces of kibble fall out and it eats it and it nudges a little bit more, it eats it. This is similar, uh, analogous to a dog hunting because they're causing the food, they, instead of being given to it, that helps boost their self-esteem. A lot of dogs that are reactive are doing some, from an insecurity and the insecurity usually comes from frustration and frustration and aggression both come from the same part of a dog's brain. So if your dog is frustrated, it can lead to aggression very easily. So we want to, and if it doesn't get a much exercise, it's going to be frustrated, especially a working breed like a healer. Um, and so getting them a proper amount of exercise by doing the exercise journal is crucial to fixing dog behavior problems. So for the scent games, uh, there are books and DVDs you can get, but I would just do a couple, just Google and find a couple free articles, try that and see if he's got a good sniffer. I'm betting he does. And then you can just start doing those particular games, with him. not just here, but in the, in the other rooms as well. Um, okay. Another one that I like to do is, does he like to play fetch? Okay, if, you, if the dog likes to play fetch, that's a wonderful pursuit game, and a lot of dogs like to do it. He doesn't like to do it, so that's why we come up with creative ones. 
All right, so the last one I'm gonna show you is what I call the doggy Stairmaster. Now I'm gonna stand up, but I wanna make sure that he's comfortable with it. Up. So I'm preceding each movement with, uh, and you can go ahead and stand up and maybe move in the corner and just go ahead and tilt it as you need to. There we go. Um, now, because uh, he's a little bit reactive, careful you don't step on your, your, your Roomba. Um, but if I get up and make a lot of sudden movements and he's got cortisol as blood and he thinks he's in charge, that can cause a strike and a bite. So before I got up, I gave him a treat and then I was holding another one in front of his nose as I stood up and that makes it more of a positive experience. So now I'm gonna go ahead and come over here. Come on, buddy. So we want to make it a very positive experience. So what I'm going to do is we're going to kind of do a little bit of an uh, uh, interesting camera angle. Uh, I'm going to have, actually, you could probably come and stay here, but stay right there for now. So for this, the last one I like to do is I call it a doggy stairmaster. Now, again, the first time you do this, do it with an empty stomach and count the maximum number and figure out where it's at. Now, I like to come with fun command words, like I mentioned off camera. Dogs can read human facial expressions. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say business, or I'm going to say Business coming up, and I'm going to say pleasure for going down. I like to use the funny command words. So basically, oh, sit. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to invite him over here. I'm going to touch his nose, and I'm going to throw the tree to the bottom. Now, this is a split-level house. I prefer, uh, and eventually you're going to be able to go down there. Let me explain how to do this first. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to throw the tree down. When he licks it up, I'm going to say the word pleasure. And then I'm going to call him back up. When he comes up here, I'm going to give him another treat and say business. Now, anytime you give a dog a treat, they should hear the command word first, the treat should go, or the command, treat should go in their mouth first, excuse me. They should do the command word immediately after. That activates their pleasure receptors and makes them more interested in wanting to do that word. If you do that and you combine it with a funny word, your dog is, is like, it's like 80% more likely to listen to that word than a regular command word like go. So, uh, all right. So now for what I'm going to do is I'm just going to, we're just going to show the first stage where I'm going to just throw the treat down here to the first landing. And then when he gets down and licks it up, I'm going to say the word uh, pleasure. And then I'm going to call back up and say business. Now, to get it to go all the way down, what I would do is either throw bank it off of the door so it bounces down there, or I might have dad down there, uh, or whoever else, you know, your boyfriend or anybody else. And so you throw the first one down there and throw it kind of on that side of this, the, the land, uh, the, what do you call that, hand, guardrail. And then, uh, then he's over there, and you can see the person. That person would hold the treat with their hand flat like this and say, Jax, and when Jax comes down, then they would give him the treat and say the word pleasure. Now, eventually, what you'll be able to do is just hold it over here and drop it all the way down the bottom, and he'll go down both flights of stairs. But right now, he doesn't know how to do that. And so we want to just set him up for success. How about we get down? There we go. Uh, all right. And uh, I'm just looking to see if his hackles are up. Okay, so what we're going to do is I'm going to have the guardian. Actually, why don't you come on, uh, on that side? And you're just going to kind of, uh, it's more important to see the dog. So turn the camera a little bit. There you go. Pleasure, business, pleasure, business, pleasure, business. Let's see if I can get a, uh, Jax, see if I can get you a good bounce. This, I can do it straight it up. Now I can do this all day long, but again, the first time you want to do it, then max it out once he's going all the way down. Uh, so this might you have to teach him how to go all the way down first. But then once we want to do that, we want to just keep on dropping it here until he, he lays down there and he's like, I'm not coming back. Then we know what his maximum number is. So um, I bet if you can start exercising him, get him the amount of exercise he needs, it's going to make him a lot more relaxed, a lot less apprehensive. It reduces the cortisol in his blood, cortisol, um, which will help him feel more relaxed. And then you can also set him up for success. If you have people coming over, well, exercising him before the people come over can really uh, put him in a position to succeed. Now, what we want to do is when they have their mouth open, they, we interpret as smiling, kind of like I think what he had now there. But he's like, that's actually stress. It's not a smile. It's not happy. So what we want to do is when we do this, um, we're going to do however long it is and time yourself so you know approximately how long it will take to do whatever is 25 to 50% is. And then basically, let's say that we have somebody coming over at 3 o'clock. Well, then maybe at 2, and let's say it takes him ten, 5 minutes to do the exercise. So maybe we do it at like 2.30, we do the exercise. So now 2.35, we're done. We sit down and he spends 10 or 15 minutes calming himself down. And then when the guest comes, we burn off that top level of energy. It puts him in a position to succeed. It makes it much easier for him to perform. Jax, come here. Sit. 
How about we get you in the light? We want to wrap up this video. Come here one more time. Oh, no, I want you right over here. No people will see you from over there. There we go. This is Jax, and these are some creative ways you can exercise your dog inside.